Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at something a little different. This is a, about a 1970 Sony model TC250 reel to reel. This is a very basic reel to reel. It does record, but mostly it was for playback. Uh, this was brought to me uh, by a customer who bought it used, took it home, and it played, but only one side did. And he brought it to me very briefly. I checked some things and found out that the head was bad. One of the coils on the head was open. So I said, find me a head. So he did. He went and bought a parts machine that had a decent head on it, brought the head to me, partially installed. And I said, uh, what did you do that for? And he said, well, I wanted to try to put it in, but I lost some parts inside the machine. And yep, I can hear him wiggling around inside. And if we pull off the head cover, we can see that uh, up in here, that's kind of missing there, which is usually a spring-loaded gizmodroid. But he's got that there, and then there's another piece of hardware underneath the flap there. So he tried, and the soldering's not half bad. So, I mean, the guy could solder, but wasn't very dexterous. He also said that uh, although it, the head alignment's wrong and it sounded awful, uh, it immediately slows down after about like 30 seconds of playtime, slows down to a stop, and then it has like no torque to get going. So my guess is is that the uh, infamous uh, motor phasing cap in here, usually it's like a one and a half microfarad and a half microfarad, just get leaky or short, and then the motor stops working. So we need to look at that too. But first things first, let's get it out of its case and see if we can uh, get the little spring-loaded alignment adjuster that's lost inside and this is cute but this is definitely not the right feet because all we got to do is push down on it and then the screw pops out and it's going to mar whatever surface this is on so that's not good either we need to replace those feet with something that's not going to destroy whatever it's sitting on but it's just uh corner screws and center screw there and then this should come right out of the case Look at this notice. This wooden base is provided free of charge as a shipping convenience. It therefore is not guaranteed against any defects. Also see signs that the jack panel has been broken and somebody slathered some uh, JB weld on it, it looks like. So we'll look into that too. Okay, so here it is out of the case. And that's the little spring-loaded adjuster here. which has a fixed point. So this point is supposed to be the pivot and then the other screw is supposed to be the actual azimuth adjustment. Then we have height adjustments too, but we'll go over that whole alignment thing once we're uh, once we're in that position. But here's the usual usual culprit. This is the phasing capacitor for the motor. And you can see they're not even using the 0.5 here. They're just using the 1.5 but this almost always fails on old Sony reel-to-reel. -reel. So whether it's a TC200, 250, you know, 350, 366, 367, 500, 530, etc. This always dies. And it will be the same symptom. It will slow down after a time and stop. And it won't have enough to get going. You won't hear the motor running or the motor will be getting hot because it's not being properly phased. That's a good bearing. Look at that. Uh, so... I'll show you how to replace that. And you can just use like a ceiling fan motor run cap. That works perfectly fine. But very simple reel-to-reel -reel as we can see. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, he just wants the basic stuff. I can see the lovely repair here he did on just slathering this thing with uh, JV weld. I guess it was broken and he wanted it not to move, so... Yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. So let's get to replacing the cap, and then we can focus on uh, doing the alignment stuff and checking it. And usually, it's just one bracket here. Hold this in. Might be another one. Yeah, I guess there's another one down below is going to be inside that mess so i'm going to need two hands bear with me here and then we'll pop this thing loose 
So there it is out. I save these old brackets uh, rather than trying to restuff this thing, which is a waste. I save the brackets for other things because they are useful. Uh, but let me show you what I commonly will use in place of this guy. So this is typically the two types that you'll see. These are both rated at 250 volts AC. They are for motor duty. Uh, this isn't the right value, but this is one package style. And this is nice because you can literally just bolt it up in there and then wire it up like the old one. Uh, this one, however, is the 1.5 microfarad, which is what I need. But since it doesn't mount anyway and I don't want loose wires, it's just going to go on a terminal strip. And then we'll mount the terminal strip up in there. But these are available through any major electronic distributor, eBay, Amazon, Mauser, DigiKey, wherever you want to buy parts from. Although it's probably better to buy it through a legit source like Mauser or DigiKey, or Newark even. Even though I'm not fond of Newark, they do have stuff that oftentimes the others don't. So we're not going to use this since it's the wrong value. Uh, but we are going to attach this to our uh, terminal strip and then mount that inside and wire it up. All right, so you can see I trimmed down a little bit of the terminal strip and cut off the center lug there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And wired this thing up, so now we can just put it back in the old spot up here. And <clears throat> then we'll fire this thing up and see uh, what's needed, of course, after we install the alignment screws. And there it is, all reattached down there. See how nicely that just tucks in there? No extra garbage to deal with. All right, so let's move on to the head problem. All right, so here's a look at the head. And you've got this little flap with the pressure pad which pushes tape onto the head. This head's pretty filthy. I definitely don't think he uh, cleaned it at all. So what my concern is is that we have to adjust four screws to get the azimuth and height correct once we get the tape loaded uh, and the test tapes all have a clear leader to begin with so that you can figure out the tape path alignment and then we can worry about fine alignments so I'm gonna stick the screw down in here get it to catch and then we'll tighten it down because it looks like this is supposed to be fixed and then this just pivots on that spring, as you can see. So, <clears throat> we have the azimuth adjustment on the right, and we have the height adjustments on the top and the bottom. So there's actually, there's two axes that this rotates on. It rotates this way and this way, and then it also rotates this way and this way. Uh, and I should be able to adjust the two height adjustments so that uh, the tape rides correctly on the tracks. So let me get the alignment tape. And what I have is the TAC YTT1003, which is the playback and alignment for a quarter, uh, quarter inch tape. And there's other ones too, but this is just happens to be the one that I have. And these are not easy to find and they are expensive. So, if you find one for a good price, it's probably best to hold on to it. Uh, so, I'm going to run the leader through here. Get it threaded up, and we'll see how far off we are. This is going to be tricky because I have to uh, engage play here. All right, so what we're after, hard to see here, uh, but the edge of this leader has to be um, in line with the head. <clears throat> Now, I don't have a full jig that I can use to 
properly align this uh, what I am going to do is play with the height a little bit because the uh, the tape head needs to come up a little bit the edge of the tape minus about a half a millimeter should be riding on that track so if we push the tape down a little bit that's about where it should be um, but it's obviously not when we tension it up against the head that's definitely not the case so we're going to raise the head a little bit and I'm going to raise it uh, one full turn here and one full turn here and then we'll recheck it that's pretty close but our azimuth's off so then make sure you're using non-magnetic tools or just erase use a tape eraser to fix the magnetic remove the magnetic charge on the tool so I'm going to adjust the azimuth until the edge of that tape lines up with the gap on there needs to come up a little bit more I'm just eyeballing this but we'll use the the test tape because there's a playback tone on the test tape we can use to finish the alignment it's pretty close maybe just a hair more All right, and we definitely have to clean those heads. And once we get everything uh, proper, we'll put some Loctite on them so they don't get moved. But let's uh, back this up a little bit. And I definitely have to clean the heads. The heads look filthy. I definitely don't think he resurfaced that roller or anything because that roller is pretty slick looking. We should probably do that too. So let's clean the gunk off the erase head first. See all that garbage there? Did he like not clean this head when he got it or something? I mean, wow. But the gap on this looks pretty good it's not too heavily worn usually these sony heads are really soft and they just get worn out so this one's in fair shape and he only wanted this deck to transfer some tapes so it'll probably go up for sale after that All right, so that's good. Uh, definitely need to pull that off. Got some end play in that too I need to take care of. Okay. So let's go ahead and re-thread this back on here. He doesn't have any tape stoppers either. But that's okay, I do have some of those. So we're going to thread this thing back up again. And then we'll have to get past the leader. Which is quite lengthy on this test tape actually, so I'll probably do that with the motor engaged. But uh, let's get the pinch roller off next. see if we can get some little plastic washers or something to put there to take the slop out all right so this thing's pretty slick the rubber itself is still pretty squishy so it's probably good but basically I'm just going to drag it as I rotate it like this I'll just lightly resurface it it's really quicker with two hands so I'm just gonna put the camera down for a second so there's what we took off. 
and you can definitely tell the uniformity is much better now and it's not slick so that's a good thing but we do need some uh, washers to take the slop out so something like that's probably gonna work alright so with the washer on there that takes the slack out so that's good now we can prop this thing up and uh, see how it behaves all right, so motor comes on right away. That's good. We're just going to get past the uh, leader, which is quite long. Yeah, the suck thing about these single motor old uh, old tapes is there uh... all right so we've only got one channel register again oh this wire came loose oh that capstan sounds awful <laughs> Well, that could be the idler wheel bouncing around behind the capstan I'm gonna give this just a drop of oil uh, let's see if I can spot the break here. Yeah, definitely. Wow, the whole cable here did not make it. All right, so I take that back. Soldering wasn't that good. Let's pull this up here. Oh, yeah, not there. Not there at all. All right, let's reattach that. All right, so that's a little better. Let's see uh, where we're at with this now. All right, so now that we got the head wired in, um, I messed with the playback adjustments a little bit. These two guys here are your playback level. And then uh, I touched up the azimuth alignment because the height was good. But now you can see that we have two channels which look nice. Uh, I am a little concerned about the idler bearing noise behind there. So I think maybe we'll pull that apart real quick. But otherwise, it's running. It's got good st uh, stability and fidelity, so I'm happy with that. All right, let's... Uh, Get some oil onto the idler wheel behind there. Okay, let's turn this on. And see if we can get that bearing chatter. You pull the cover off here, and you get oil in this sponge here. That oils up the idler wheel. Looks like he's already oiled a couple of other spots in here. Yeah, that takes care of the chatter noise. So, I think we can go back together now. And we'll see how she sounds now. Alright, let's just play some uh, music from a couple of tapes I have. This is from Yes Songs, the concert. It's like a half a percent slow, but steady. It's been on a little bit, too. A lot quieter with the oil, huh? No clunkety clunk clunk. So I think this thing's good. Uh, I'll stick some feet on it that are of appropriate height and stuff, and then we'll move on. So, hope you guys enjoy this little video. More stuff to come.